Hey there, good morning. Welcome to the Jeep Sala Garage. So today we're gonna to be replacing the radiator and radiator hoses on this 2012 Jeep Wrangler JK. I've been having some issues with it running hot, overheating a little bit. I did have a coolant leak up here at this upper radiator hose. I kind of put a little Band-Aid solution on it, an extra hose clamp stopped that leak, but it's obviously time to replace that. And I don't think I'm getting good flow through my radiator. I have a video on diagnosing why your JK is overheating. I'll be sure to link that in the description below. But right now I need to replace the radiator, the hoses, so let's get to it. We'll start by removing this cover and the air intake here. The hose here just comes off and then there's a uh, eight millimeter on this guy. We're gonna loosen up. Off of the throttle body there. This hose will come out to 10 millimeters right here. Once all the tabs are loose on our air box, pull that hose off the back. And this will lift out of the way. One last little sensor down here that we have to disconnect. What on earth? Looks like dog food. So like that doesn't surprise me, but I would expect to see like rat droppings or mouse droppings in there or something. It's perfectly clean. I don't see any rodent excrement in there. Why would there be dog food in my Jeep? Haven't you been doing your job? That is super weird. Doesn't surprise me. Rodents like, you know, warm engines, but why are there no droppings? But there's dog food. And I think it's dog food. It's too big to be Tootsie food. Our air box here is just gonna pull out and we'll go dump this out. I really didn't want to have to mess with the wiring on my winch here. I have this uh, one red wire coming through the grill, but just for filming and ease of doing this job, I decided yeah, I just need to go ahead and remove this red wire so I can pull this grill all the way off. Now with that wire out of the way, I can disconnect these turn signals, push that little red tab back and push down on there and it should slide right off. And this one, the tab is on the bottom. I don't really want to crawl on the ground right now, so a little counterclockwise rotation of the bulb, and it should just pull right out. Now my grill is disconnected. And one more little cover to remove here. Okay, now we should have good access to everything on the front, the back, underneath. You might have a little skid plate down there that you have to remove. Mine's already off because I put on this aftermarket front bumper, but that should just uh, have those tabs that pop off and pull it away pretty easy. Now underneath on the passenger side, I've got a little pet cock right there. I've got a little rubber tubing. I'm gonna try to fit over that pet cock. Hopefully that stays. Then this little thing right here, we're just gonna twist it counterclockwise and drain our fluid. And the radiator cap off to help it flow a little better. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna let that drain while I go have some lunch. Now we can remove this hose and the fluid reservoir. This should just slide up and out. You might have one with a little tab on it that you gotta pull off. That out of the way. We'll disconnect this wire loom, a little tab to push down on there and slide it out. Then a couple eight millimeter bolts. And our fan should lift up out of the way. So now here we have the lower radiator hose, just a little pinch clamp right here. We'll pinch that in, slide it back, pull this hose off. We're gonna completely remove it from the uh, water pump down there as well. Got my new hose here ready to go because we're gonna be replacing both of those. And over here, we've got a few hose clamps on the upper radiator hose that we're gonna remove as well. And as you're removing the hoses, be prepared to lose a little bit of fluid.
Now we're gonna loosen the transmission cooler here. There's two 10 millimeter bolts here. One on the top, one on the bottom. Don't remove this middle one where the uh, cooling lines connect. You wanna leave that one in place. And then on the other side, there's a little eight millimeter back there. We're gonna remove that guy. And one of the best tips I could probably give you is be really meticulous about taking things apart, what goes where. I'm super careful about labeling things, so that way I get everything back exactly where it goes. Now our transmission cooler is free. Well, not free, but loose, so we can get to the uh, rest of the bolts. A couple more grommets to remove here. I really need a trim removal tool. I just don't have one right now. Someone I need to invest in. Now there's four little eight millimeter bolts we gotta remove. There's two at the top right there, number one, and number two. Then down on the bottom, number three right there. And on the other side, number four right there. And now you'll see how this whole assembly moves. That'll come into play here in a second when we're trying to remove those bottom two. Sometimes you can kind of lift this up, get it out of the way so that you can get some more access there. But let's get these top two first. I was able to sneak a ratcheting eight millimeter box end wrench along the top here to get this one. And I'm using just a box end eight millimeter to finish these guys off on the top. You can get to them, it's a little tedious, but you can make it work. Now, before I attack those last two eight millimeter bolts on the bottom of the condenser down there, I'm gonna free up the rest of the assembly so that I can kind of lift it up and pull it back so I can get to those a lot easier. So on the front side here, there are two 10 millimeters. There's a 10 millimeter here and one on the other side. Then there's a couple eight millimeters. So right here, holding these lines right back behind there, there's an eight millimeter you gotta remove. And then down on the bottom, there's an eight millimeter, you can see right back in there. There it is, you gotta remove that guy holding those lines on. And then there's one last little wire loom you gotta remove right down there. And let's bust that out real quick. To get to this uh, eight millimeter on with these lines, that little bracket, I ended up taking the bolt out of the horn here, pushing the horn out of the way a little bit so I can get better access to that bolt right there. Now with this totally loose, I should be able to pick it up, kind of back it off a bit. There we go. So I get to those last eight millimeter bolts. One last little wire harness. Try this again. Now when we're trying to pull the radiator out, uh, be careful of these, these plastic covers. They're gonna try to get hung up on stuff. So just go slow, be mindful of those. I've got that one kind of tucked back on each side, so hopefully it'll be free. But with that, we should be able to pull the radiator out. Just gonna lift it up and be gentle. We're gonna be careful to not poke any holes in our condenser or transmission cooler. So we're just gonna take our time. I did throw a little bungee cord to hold the condenser. We've got our transmission cooler and condenser here. It's just hooked on down there to provide a little support as I back the radiator off. And just don't force it, kind of take your time, see what it's getting hung up on, push things out of the way. But it should fairly gently slide up out of the way. There we go, old radiator is out. I close the little pet cock here so it doesn't keep dripping. Now we've got our old radiator and our new. Make sure everything matches up. Take off some of these parts that we have to put onto our new radiator. Make sure that the new one has all these grommets and everything. 
there and there, but they match up just perfect, so that'll work good. Okay, now we'll gently drop the new one back into place, and we'll run through the installation super quick. This will be fast. Now that I've got it roughly in place, I'm gonna get these four little condenser bolts back in before I bolt everything else on. All right, got the four bolts on the condenser in place. Now I can set the feet of the radiator in their little holes there. Now I'll bolt the transmission cooler back up. This is the little bracket that goes on the bottom transmission cooling lines down there. And we'll get this little eight millimeter bolt on this line bracket here. Now I can install these top two radiator bolts. These are 10 millimeter. Let's drop these new radiator hoses in place. Bam, that was easy. Now I can drop the fan back in place, the air box, reconnect all the little connectors and hoses, just double checking everything. All right, fans installed, all the little connectors are back together except for the air intake. I'm gonna leave that out while we fill this up because on the thermostat, there's a little spot where we can bleed the coolant, bleed the air so the coolant will feel better. I've got my HOAT coolant here. This is a 2012 and earlier JKs require the HOAT. Make sure you get the right kind of fluid for your vehicle. If you put the wrong kind and end up mixing them, they can congeal and just cause big problems. All of these products, the new radiator, radiator hoses, everything will be linked in the description below of what I used on this project. So let's get to filling this up. And another tip, double check your petcock, make sure it's closed before you start filling this up. And the coolant I'm using is not pre-diluted, so I have to dilute it 50-50 as we go along here. And on top of the thermostat right here, there's a little valve. We can loosen this to let air out and we'll fill the system up until we start seeing uh, coolant dribble out of here. That just helps some of the air escape. All right, looks like it's filled up. We can tighten that uh, vent. So we've got the air intake back in place. I'm gonna top it off again here. Then I'm gonna start the Jeep up, get it up to operating temperature, and keep adding fluid as the system burps, getting the air out, topping it off as we go along. Watching underneath for leaks as well. Be sure to check out in the description below all the products that I used on this project. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good day.